Tenth question from thermodynamics, you know, the portion post gravitation. Normally, students do not take with that attention. In fact, they are very, very fertile area. You talk about gravitation, you talk about properties of bulk matter, SHM waves, and subsequently thermodynamics, KTG, they are very important. A general psychological tilt is found more towards pre-gravitation, but when it comes to examination, you need to see the data and you should not be the victim of perception. That's very important. So here, let's see. A sample of an ideal gas is taken through the cyclic process, A, B, C, A. The change in internal energy of the gas along the path C, A is minus of 180 joule. That means here, U, A minus of U, C, that is minus of 180 joule. The gas absorbs 250 joule of heat along the path AB. So here it absorbs the heat 250 joule and let me write it here. And here along this path it absorbs heat 60 joule that has been given. We need to calculate the work done by the gas along the path ABC along this straight line, two straight lines. So if I want to calculate the work done, I know work done equals to Q minus of delta U. Yes, that's first law of thermodynamics. And you need to calculate the work done along this path. And the heat has been given. And you know the sign convention, heat absorbed. That means the heat would be written positive. So this would be 310. What about internal energy change? You know. This depends on the point. It doesn't depend on the path. So yes, the difference in internal energy between C and A would be same for both the path, the upper one and the lower one. So the change in internal energy which was given from the first data can be used in the second instance as well. And this time, when I talk about the final, you see, UC minus UA, because here C is the final. and if this is minus 180, UC minus UA has to be plus of 180, eventually resulting into that, and that has to be 130 joule. And let's search 130 joule here. I have it in option number one. Fine, time to move to the next one. Eleventh question I have, and let's see a nice fusion of thermal expansion and properties of bulk matter. What does the question have to see? Let's see. At 40 degree centigrade, a brass wire of this much radius is hung from the ceiling. A small mass capital M is hung from the free end of the wire. So that helps in the elongation. When the wire is cooled from 40 degree to 20 degree, it regains its original length of this. We need to calculate the value of M on a very close scale. That means a slight amount of approximation is allowed. So this capital M, of course, gives a certain value of elongation. And of course, that's the property. When you put the stress, that will create an elongation. And now, in order to recover the original length, either you remove the load but here, what has it been done is the temperature of the system has been lowered. So the elongation generated by this is equal to the contraction created by the drop in temperature. That's the reason here. Now, that would be quite simple, isn't it? So what will we do is that let's talk about the elongation created by this. So delta L would be equals to MGL upon AY. L is the original length, Y being the Young's modulus of elasticity. MG is the external load. And this is the elongation produced by the load. And this has to be equals to the contraction created by the temperature drop. So you just need to equate it and you would be getting the value of M. However, 
To the best of our information and to the best of our calculation skill, we could not find any option which matches with the given one. So here, our take would be, we could not find the option which could match with the given options that is derived from the organizer's website. So this is all we have to say about it. Now, let's move to the next one. Question 12. A thin ring of radius 10 centimeter carries a uniformly distributed charge. Okay, so if I just try to show it in the form of a solution here. The charge is there and the radius is there and this thing is revolving with a constant angular velocity and that omega is 40 pi radian per second. And this produces the magnetic field at the center given by 3.8 into 10 raised to the power minus 9. Basis this data, we need to calculate the charge on the ring. Well, that is quite simple. The revolving charge ring can be considered to be a current carrying ring. And how much would be the magnetic field? Mu naught I. I is Q omega by 2 pi, okay, a regular one. So mu naught I divided by 2 of the radius. So let me call the radius by A. This is the magnetic field at the center. You see, mu naught I by 2A and I being this. So it's a very regular feature thing that we discuss in the class. And this will give us option number 2 as the correct one. Fine, let's now move to the 13th question. 